What's your name, ma'am? And red, red, red Lydia, let's say Lydia is part of the majority. She's one of those disengaged employees. She's part of the 70 to 91 percent. I'm not even valued. Can you imagine a more effective way to engage Lydia than to say, hey, Lydia, how about you and I co-create the ads we're going to put on the other for the, for the openings we have in the office? Lydia, how about you and I co-create the agenda for next year's meeting? All of a sudden, Lydia goes from, they don't even know I'm here. They want you to co-create a meeting or a schedule or an ad or a marketing program. So co-creating the future. Living our values. Should leaders be flexible? Yes, they should. My goodness, in every aspect of the conduct, with the exception of when it comes to the values. Oh, Lydia's cool. Yes, she knows it's no longer 2008. She'll be flexible. <gasps> now, when it comes to that, she's not going to budge. How do you know? I know her values. The people we surround ourselves should be able to hang their hat on our, on our values. We, we talk about being rigid with our values. Everything else is cool, we're flexible, we're lived in, but as far as our values are concerned, you can count on the way I'm going to conduct myself. Role modeling, pretty self-explanatory. How many of you have children in the audience? Please raise your hands. Okay, great. I have three sons. They're all older now, but they were teenage boys at the same time. Let me share with you what didn't work very well. It never worked when anything I did sounded anything like, don't do as I do, do as I say. Zero leverage is just ineffective. It wasn't until I realized I had to be a vivid, living, personal example. How can we expect anyone to engage with us or do what we'd like them to do if we're not a vivid, living, personal example? Building confidence. Something in 2017, we don't do a lot of. Are you kidding me? Build your confidence? I gotta go, 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 do, 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 act, act. I got 20 minutes to go. I gotta go, 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 do, 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 act, act, act. Build their, they're adults where they need a cheerleader. I'm busy. Building someone's confidence is one of the most effective ways we can create engagement on a team, whether it's a team going to critical care or a team going on vacation with a family. I don't exercise enough, but when I do, I use an elliptical. You know what an elliptical is, right? It's in our farm by itself. <laughs> and I have these three sons that are bigger, stronger, smarter, and better looking than I am. And the four of us use the same machine. And we really beat it up. So we got another one. We got a new one. Now, on the new machine, as soon as you get off, we're talking about confidence building, as soon as you get off the new machine, it says you worked out for 43 minutes, you burned 462 calories, blah, 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 blah. The old one, as soon as you hopped off the machine, great job, great job, great job. <laughs> it's a machine telling you you did a great job. You're alone in the barn with a machine. <laughs> and I'd see my sons coming out of the barn on the upper floor. Yeah, I thought I did pretty well. <laughs> the machine just told them they did a great job. Building someone's confidence is a, a very, very important thing. Enabling versus empowering, we just like to suggest that there's a lot of overuse of empowering. Lydia, I'm going to empower you to do this project. I'm going to give you the authority. I'm going to give you all the resources you need. You are empowered. Good luck. I'm going on sabbatical for six months. I'll be back. Enabling, Lydia, I'm going to enable you to do this. I'm going to give you the authority, give you all the resources, and we're going through such rapid change, you might need something else to just give you coffee. I'm not going to micromanage you. I'm not going to overlook your everything you do. But we're changing so quickly, you might need something. So just the nuance between empowering and enabling, once again, just suggest you think about it. And then the final thing, communication. My goodness. The most important word on this screen, communication. Why would we think communication might be more important than all those other things put together? Anyone guess? Students out, fifth grade, I can wait a long time. <laughs> can anyone guess why communication might be the most important thing on the whole list? Okay, very good. Oh, amen! Ooh, what's your name? Victoria. 
You can't do any of the other things. How can you, if you have the greatest vision in the world, but you can't articulate it, it's worthless. How can you build someone's confidence if you can't appropriately communicate? Communication is the most important thing in leadership, selling and following, all these things. What's the most important part of leadership? What's the, oh, excuse me, excuse me. What's the most important part of communication? What do you think? There's not even a close second. The most important part of communication. Listening. How are we doing as far as listening in, in America? What do you think? One of the reasons why we have so many disengaged people in America, there's two major reasons. One, ego. It's all about me. It's all about me, 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 me. What I want, what I need, what I get, what happens, and how I feel. It's me, 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 me. It's all about me. It's me, 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 me. Okay, talk about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> how many languages does a typical person know who lives in America? Three quarters of a language, right? They move the profanity. A half language. How many languages does a typical person know who lives overseas on average? Three, and it's on its way to four. Wow. Wow. So communication, listening, listening. How many of you think you're pretty good listeners? Please, please, raise your hands. I'm not going to call on your hands. Raise your hands. Two people in this room? How many think you're pretty good listeners? Come on. Anyone listening, by the way? <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Very good. Very good. I love studies, and you love studies. It helps you get the experience of a half a million people in America. And I've memorized a lot of studies about the challenges in leadership in America and the challenges in listening. Fifteen different studies about listening. Let me sum them all up for you right now. If you live and work in America, there's a good probability that you suck at listening. 